Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India start uh, this lecture 23rd with a thought process. A family must have enough food for body, mind and soul to fuel the fire of life. If I look at today's family, it does not have that. So, let us uh, recall what we learnt uh, <coughs> in the last lecture. If you look at, we basically looked at one dimensional laminar premix flame, right. And then we invoke the equation of mass, momentum and spaces and uh, satisfying the conservation along with the energy. And they try to derive a relations for relationship for laminar burning velocity. And if you look at why really we want to look at laminar burning velocity. Of course, the flame is laminar, therefore we need to look at laminar burning velocity. When the flame is turbulent, we need to look at turbulent burning velocity. In real situation, turbulent burning velocity will be more important than the laminar. Fortunately, the turbulent burning velocity can be related to laminar burning velocity. So, if you understand the laminar burning velocity or laminar flame, we can somehow manage to you know talk about the laminar uh, turbulent burning velocity. Question arises why burning velocity? Why not something else? For example, flame temperature, right? Why you are looking at burning velocity, spending a lot of time to derive a relationship? Because that is the only one parameter in case of premix flame, fortunately, which can characterize the entire flame. And this laminar burning velocity can be related to several other concepts like flame thickness, ignition energy, quenching diameter and several other blow out phenomena and then flashback. I do not know whether you are aware or not, but as we go along we will see. That means, we using a simple you know uh, parameter burning velocity, we can really explain and understand a lot of phenomena associated with the flame, premix flame particularly. And also the diffusion flame to uh, some extent, but in diffusion flame we define some other term, not the burning velocity. right? So, now let us look at flame thickness. right? If you look at flame thickness, and uh, we have already defined divided the flame into three zones. What are those zones? Huh? Is a preheat zone, reaction zone, and recombination zone. Right? Three zones. Question arises: When you talk about thickness of a flame, what you will say? Can we take? Oh, I mean, all three zones, or we will take the reaction zone? or we will take the preheat zone or we will take combination of this, right. There is a lot of debate about it, how thick is flame is and we will be using a, an approximation also, uh, whenever I will be talking about diffusion flame and droplet known as thin flame approximation, right. And as I had mentioned earlier, flame is generally very thin, right. And naturally, one has to take care of the reaction rate, right. But we will be using a, a what you call another way of looking at in terms of temperature, because in experiment one cannot really define where the peak reaction rate is occurring, right. And then talk about it, but of course, numerical people do use it. So, there are several definitions of flame thickness you will find in literature, but we will be restricting to one of them and that is 
basically based on the temperature. For example, if I take a temperature over here, which profile I have shown T u, this is the unburnt mixtures and if I can assume this is an along x direction, this is of course, my temperature and if I take this is from you know x starting from here and it is infinity, what you can see the temperature profile, you see the temperature is remaining constant, after that it is changing the slopes and again you know like it is increasing and changing the slopes. So, when the slope is changing right, there will be some inflection point right. And what I will do, I will draw a parallel line here and I will draw a parallel line here right and draw a tangent to this surface and it will cut over here. So, that and whenever it will cut this tangent, I will say this is nothing but my flame thickness you know. This is physically right, but how we will do it mathematically, what do we really we are doing? We are basically saying the temperature difference divided by the temperature gradient at the inflection point, you know slope will be changing, somewhere ignition will be occurring. So, there we call it as inflection point and then we do that. So, that means, it is basically a flame thickness we can define mathematically ratio of maximum temperature that is T f difference and that means, with respect to the unburnt temperature T f minus T u divided by d t by d x ignition right. Ignition we are taking you know for our convenience, because we know this gradient from our analysis right. Okay. Is that clear? So, we know that temperature gradient you know will be defined, but to talk about this temperature gradient we have already approximated. See if you look at this is basically approximation is equal to 0 0.75 T a plus 0 0.25 T u right. There is nothing very sacrosanct about it. somebody can say look it is not 0 0.75 it is 0 0.7 it may be possible right and otherwise 0 0.3 u right. It can be, but we are using this just to track this problem or make it tractable or handle this problem easily. The temperature gradient at the flame surface we know that d t by d x this we have already derived is equal to 3 by 4 m dot double dash keep in mind this is f and this is f right. This is a bar average right C p by k g t f minus t u and what we have done in place of t i z we have used this terminology ok right. So, what we will do now we will just substitute over here if I substitute over here, what I am getting? I am getting T f minus T u right divided by 3 by 4 m dot triple dash f C p and k g will go here and T f minus T u. So, this is cancel it out right. So, what I will get then? I will get basically right delta L is equal to 4 by 3 k g right divided by C p m dot f you know double dash bar. That means, this is the average reaction rate in the reaction zone right that we are considering. It is goes on changing, but we are taking because we will be using Arrhenius you know equation for a global kind of global reaction right one for a single step chemistry right. So, therefore, we can get that and we know that m dot triple dash you know m dot is basically is rho u s l right. We can find out that delta l is equal to 4 by 3 alpha by s l. What I will do? I will just put this thing and you know like if I know this m dot f, I can substitute those values and arrive at 4 by 3 alpha by s l right. And how it is I am just leaving, you can look at it 
that means it is what he is saying alpha is equal to k z by rho c p right. And um, what you can see from here that means flame thickness right is a function of laminar burning velocity. As the laminar burning velocity is dependent on what inlet temperature dependent on the fuel air ratio dependent on the pressure dependent on the type of what you call fuel oxidizer right system. So, naturally what I am expecting that flame length will be function of inlet temperature pressure equivalence ratio and fuel and oxidizer system right. That means, what you expect this one if I say how this flame thickness will be varying with respect to equivalence ratio. That means, I need to look at how it is varying, how the flame uh, laminar burning velocity is varying with the equivalence ratio. You remember that the laminar burning velocity for a methane air system or a for any hydrocarbon air system right. this is my phi, phi is the basically equivalence ratio. How it will be? It will be something if I take around 1 here right and this is lean side and this is re side what it will be? It will be something that means around 1.05 there will be peak values right. Now, if I want to draw a how this flame length uh, sorry how this flame thickness will be varying with respect to equivalence ratio. If you look at my burning velocity is very higher here. So, naturally this delta L you know is proportional to 1 by S L. So, I will get a minimum value yes or no right because the burning velocity highest there. So, if I keep all the things are same inlet temperature and all this pressure all those things the naturally it will be you know constant. You can say like uh, other things uh, may be little bit changes will be, but it will be proportional to 1 over S right. Burning velocity is higher that will be minimum. So, if it is on the lean side what it would be? If I draw you know delta L in this what will be my value will be somewhere very low values you know. And then other side it will be like that this will be delta L right yes or no. Because my burning velocity is dropping down both on the lean and the re side of course, you know slope will be different the rate at which it will be dropping down, but it will be you know just opposite that that we will see how it is you know. So, let us uh, having talked about this flame thickness we will be looking at another very important aspect that is the flame extinction right. And if you look at why you need to study this flame extinction because we know that fire or the flame is a very dangerous thing we have seen that you know some of the houses gutted into fire you might have seen nowadays lot of buildings you know even catching fire due to some uh, what you call negligence on the part of there. But earlier days there was a lot of way of you know handling fire of course, if I remember earlier days in village the whole village will be you know turned into houses because at that time thatched houses are being used right. But question arises fire is very important for our life. So, also the but how to control it is also important. And what we do in you know all the engines like combust uh, what you call rocket engines or the gas turbine engine or any other engines you know where we generate power or the thrust we always try to control the control the fire or control the flame in it right. I am using fire and flame in a interchangeable keep in mind it is not supposed to, but I am just using for my you know just convenience say. 
So, flame is has to be contained inside combustor that is important. Now, there are several safety issues are there. If you look at there are several kind of safety issues which one can think of that means, I, we must learn how to contain a flame, how to control a flame. One of course, in laboratories you know like we always worry about whether how to you know douse the flame if it will occur accidentally. So, also in the homes elevators of course, some example in the big houses and very important the aircraft safety is very important that is also being talked about and you know coal mines is another place where it is quite important. You may not be knowing or some of you may be aware also that we are having you know mine fire coal mines fire which is existing since 1916 and today it is also continuing continuing and we do not have any solution how to douse the fire particularly in the you know in the Jharkhand region Dhanbad region you know like there the fire is engulfing large amount of coal million tons of the coals you know are being burnt into ashes we do not have a solution right. So, similarly it is very important if you remember that you know in order to um, contain uh, you know like avoid the flame in the mines a person had invented a lamp do you remember who is that person and then you know he is basically Humphrey Davy right and there is of course, nuclear plant where the you know fire is a very important one and has to be contained so also the spacecraft. Now, question arises how we can extinguish a flame, how we can use a extinguish a flame or a fire I am using it is interchangeably right. What are the ways we have seen like you know candle flame whenever the light will come and whenever light uh, what you call electricity will go away we generally use candle flame for temporary right. Of course, nowadays emergency systems are the light system with battery, but we always what do, how do you extinguish a candle flame just blow air what we really we are doing by blowing air right. What really we are doing how it is being flame being doused or extinguished. And whenever the fire you remember like I do not know whether you people are uh, involved in extinguishing a fire or not because nowadays all are self centered earlier days whenever fire is there we will go with the people and let us you know help them. Today the you know in cities and others even in village people are not cooperating right because people are more selfish nowadays. Anyway, let me get into that what really we do we, we just go and pour water you know like bucket of water we used to take in the village and today of course, the you are having a hose pipe which will go and put water. So, water also we can douse if sometimes you know something happens we spray water right is a benign water is not there what could have happened right. So, now question arises what really is happening inside. And sometimes you might be knowing that is a fire extinguisher sometimes carbon dioxide gas or some you know kind of a nitrogen we use. What really happens? Is it really something happening like some heat being you know how this flame being propagated because of heat being generated and it try to consume then they prepare the things and go right. Now, of course, uh, <coughs> like uh, what do you call when we do that means, is a one way thinking of using the heat you know if I manage the heat being generated due to the flame rather I cannot make it self sustain. So, flame would not be there right that is the one way of doing it. Another way of looking at you have seen the kinetics plays a very important role if temperature is higher then only the reaction will be taking place if temperature is low can really take reaction take place even though fuel air there. For example, if this uh, room is mixed with fuel air a ratio which can be burned, but if there is no ignition if there is no heat sources you cannot really this thing if a temperature is very very low I know then nothing will happen it will be there Maybe it will affect your health, 
because of fuel layer there, but it would not really be converted into a flame. So, if you look at all these extinction process can be divided broadly into two categories, one is thermal effect right. That means, what we use is that we one example is water we use that will be spray and then you know it will be small droplets surface area will increase evaporation will go on you know like evaporation will be enhanced and then there will be also addition of diluents you know there is a heat transfer and also diluent. And there is another way of that alteration of kinetics for example, I will use halogens or some other gases right you know which will be altering or inhibiting the reaction to take place right. I can put some other gases which will be accelerating or enhancing the combustion by changing the kinetics. So, combination of both can be used you know to talk about uh, basically what you call flame extinction. What really is happening we are trying to quench the flame right. For example, we quench the mob as well whenever they will go to what you call violent. There is a very interesting way of quenching the uh, agitation or the violent. In recent days a lot of things are happening because of for no reason you know very kind of things. So, how to do that this is again you will have to quench you will have to quench the aspiration or the what you call violent mind of a person. Similarly, the flame is considered as a violent right. So, you need to quench it. What is the way of quenching it? As I told it is the energy which will be released that you will have to contain right. That is the basic principle either you do by thermal effect or do you do by the uh, kinetics. It is the energy which is matter altogether right. So, similarly when people if you look at the youngsters are becoming violent nowadays across the globe in India is no exception. How to handle them is a very important aspect that is why I gave a quote like you need to look at other aspect of life. So, coming back to that that means we will allow the flame you know how we will talk about this quenching our flame one way of transferring the heat if the flame is there how we will do you will have to put a water or something suppose there is a tube where the mixtures are there right particularly in case of premix flame. Then what you will have to do? you will have to transfer the heat. How you can do that? You can say I will cool it, you can mix or without mixing you can do that. That means, we can allow the flame to pass through a narrow passage right. Then what happens? It will be quenched or it will be accelerated. If there is a uh, mixtures you know for example, I am taking a passage you know like a tube. this is the tube where this is a fuel air mixture you know. Air mixture right and there is another tube which is very very small if you keep in mind that this is D very big diameter this is a very small diameter this is also mixed with the same you know fuel air if I say this is methane plus air and this is also methane plus air you know both are the same and same equivalence ratio I can say let us say phi is equal to 1 for example ok both are same and I will ignite here right. This is the ignition source or a spark I am creating similarly I am creating spark what will happen? This is let us say you know like a 5 centimeter or maybe 7 centimeter this is a or let us say this is a 10 centimeter and this is 1 mm right. I will say this is 10 centimeter this is 1 mm one order of magnitude difference. What will happen? Is it flame will propagate in this you know? If I will do it same amount of ignition energy I am giving same fuel air mixture what will happen flame will it propagate and keep in mind that there is a lot of heat transfer is taking place here. That means you know 
is going out heat transfer right this is going out right similarly this is also going out what will happen in the smaller diameter will it flame will go if i make it small if it is going at 1 mm if i'll make it 0.5 mm will it go really if it is i'll make it 0.2 mm or 0.1 mm i can take another tube you know 0.1 mm right the same thing you know mixture ch4 a phi 1 this is 0.1 mm So, you will find that what is happening to the heat loss that is the two things one is heat being generated because the same full air mixture you are giving ignition energy let us say some way right and in another heat loss. Heat loss can be several things right it can be conduction it can be convection it can be radiation right let us say total heat loss whatever is happening. So, heat loss how heat loss is changes along with this that means heat losses if I look at losses you know heat loss, heat loss is changing. How it is changing is it the same heat loss is happening for the all diameter what I have taken? What is happening? Heat loss is decreasing as I going like it will decrease like this or it will remain same or it will increase there might be three things right. One is heat loss will increase from here to there and another heat loss from three cases you know will be you know decreasing right. That means, here it is increasing here it is decreasing right or it will remain same it would not change between three cases three diameters right what I have considered what will be happening. heat loss will increase as you go along with this that means, less heat losses from here more heat loss uh, from here and most heat loss are the largest here smaller right. Because the surface area is being increases as compared to the volume of uh, you know as compared to the volume of fuel air mixture being burned that is very important right. So, therefore, and this concept was recognized by Humphrey Davy long time back and who employed in a mine you know uh, who employed in devising a mine safety lamp. Did you observe this thing your experiment in plus 2 science suppose there is a pre mix flame right there is a pre mix flame. this is fuel plus air mixture keep in mind this is like a Bunsen burner right. This is a flame if I put a net you know over here you know net what is this net this is a stainless steel net very fine mesh or you can call net or a mesh you know mesh is a better word right stainless steel mesh. What will happen to the flame if I flame is there I put like this cross what will happen huh? spread what will happen in the bottom there will be also flame and the top there will be also flame right is not it. What do you have observed what did you observe there won't be any flame here right flame will be and as you move this mesh you can take flame <laughs> with you of course to some extent right flame will be dangling depend if you dance you can make the flame to dance by with the help of a mesh and this concept was used by the Humphrey Davy to contain the flame why it is so that is 
because he will be handling with the quenching you know he will be trying to quench the flame, flame cannot propagate through the pore holes of the mesh and then we need to look at what is flame quenching right. So, that is a very important concept. So, what is flame quenching? As I told you that whenever you know heat loss is higher as compared to heat being generated there will be flame quenching right or equal to right. That means, for a flame to propagate energy released due to chemical reaction must maintain high temperature otherwise it cannot. If it is there is all the heat being generated is going away due to heat loss, then natural temperature cannot pick up. So, you cannot have right. And heat loss can be increased by decrease the passageway resulting in low reaction rate. As I told you surface area will be increasing when you decrease the diameter or the uh, width of the you know two channel right as compared to the volume amount of heat being generated in a specific volume or particular volume. So, energy release rate reduces temperature drops below the self ignition temperature as a result there will not be any quenching and that leads to the flame quenching. If you look at the whole process involving the what is basically the heat balance right. So, now what is the quenching diameter as I told you I will conduct experiment right in this way I will take a some diameter d and see whether flame is travelling or not right. And I will take the same mixture go to a smaller diameter I will go to smaller and find out at which diameter flame is not propagating or not going through the thing. And that is known as quenching diameter this is a critical diameter of a circular tube below which flame cannot propagate right. And people have conducted the experiment also for channel it is a tube right this is channel two plate they can take and conduct experiment that is also known as flame quenching width or the thick width kind of thing right. So, uh, some of the data is you can look at it methane air right if you look at it is having 2.5 mm quenching diameter but if I use oxygen methane and oxygen you will see it has been reduced 0.3 and similarly for propane air acetylene air if you look at the quenching diameter is 0 0.8 as compared to methane air. Why it is so? Because the burning velocity is higher that is 140 whereas here is 20. If you look at hydrogen air the burning velocity at and you know for stoichiometry mixture whatever the data I have given burning velocity for the stoichiometry equivalence ratio equal to 1. So, it is very higher and it is also smaller and whenever oxygen you, are, you know put so naturally it will be you know smaller. So, we need to now relate this quenching diameter to the laminar burning velocity we will do that and using a very simplified analysis what I am doing this is basically a tube this is a tube what you call this is a tube having diameter of d q I am saying this is the quenching diameter right. And this is the flame which is travelling through that with a velocity burning velocity that is S l and the delta l is the thickness of the flame right. That means, thickness in which all heat being released or all the things are being and some conduction is going on. And here we are considering that there is no heat loss due to radiation right and also convection we are not considering what we are doing whatever the heat being released is basically going away due to conduction this is an approximation keep in mind. And we will be doing some more applica uh, uh, you know simplification that means, for this condition the flame can propagate only if the heat release you know or heat generated due to chemical reaction is greater than the heat loss due to heat transfer in this example or in this analysis we are talking about only heat conduction right. But in complex analysis you need to talk about the radiation as well right. But uh, now that means, it will be quenched whenever the heat generated is equal to the heat loss due to conduction. 
So, let us look at rate of heat generated per unit volume. That will be what in this volume? It will be q da, q dot triple dash will be m dot f delta S c, right? Heat of combustion. This is being consumed and this is being released. So, this is the amount of heat. Of course, keep in mind that here we are assuming all the fuel is being being burned and releasing it. In a real situation, it won't be. This is an idealization. Okay. So, heat generated in the volume will be basically in this volume, this is per unit volume, this is per volume will be what? This term into pi by 4 d q square, this is the you know like a cross sectional area, if you look at this will be like this you know right and this is your what you call delta L and this diameter is basically d q. So, this is a cylindrical kind, kind of thing, so 4 by pi by 4 d q square and delta L. So, heat being lost due to the wall conduction right will be what? Conduction is k g pi d q, this is the surface area you know pi d q and delta L is your surface you know and d t by d r. Is the temperature, we are saying only the temperature gradient along the r direction, the temperature gradient along the z direction is negligibly small, but in real situation it is not right. We are assuming, because the gradient along is much higher as compared to the gradient along the z direction, that is one assumption. And if you look at, I want to estimate this d t by d r, for that you need to solve you know conjugate or you will have to handle the conjugate heat transfer, because the solid this is a gas, gas will be here right and this is solid. So, you will have to take care of conjugate heat transfer is quite complex. So, what we will be doing? We will be simplifying it and what we will be doing? If you look at this temperature profile higher here and this is a not a linear right. It cannot be linear, it will be going and then you know also increasing and then after certain distance it will be almost constant asymptotically it will be decreasing right. But what we are assuming? We are taking a what you call linear temperature distribution you know like we are saying that this is like that. And uh, we are also assuming there is another assumption we will saying this is a uniform temperature in the gas, but here it is linear it will be like this kind of thing linear right. It is not uh, asymptotically decreasing. So, therefore, we can say that d t by d r is nothing but you know t f minus t u, because we are assuming this uh, this thing and d q by c. In principle c can be equal to 2, if you look at roughly, but we can uh, make it more accurate by considering c as a constant you know which can be greater than 2, because if you look at it can, right. In linear if I take it can be 2 kind of thing and do manage that, but we are not right. So, quenching diameter if I put this thing here you know substitute these values here and then I can say that Q by heat release is equal to Q conduction right. And I will get that, what I will get if I look at this I can write down as K G pi d Q delta L T F minus T U d Q by C is equal to m dot triple dash F delta S C pi by 4 d q square delta L. So, this will cancel it out right and this d q I will be cancelling out over here pi will cancel it out and I will get the d q because d q square is there right in this light hand side. So, d q will be nothing but 4 c this is my 4 will go this side right and there is a also c will go here. So, 4 c, c is a constant which can be varied will be greater than 2 always k g t f minus t u divided by delta s c m dot f triple dash right. And you know that delta s c is what? If you remember that delta s c approximated as nu plus 1 c p t f minus t u, this is an approximation right. So, we can use that and 1 over m dot f we can express as what as a 
burning velocity. You can look at uh, those expressions and if when you do that, what I will do? Uh, I will after simplification I will get d q is equal to root over 8 c and delta l. Once I get laminar burning velocity this I can put in terms of flame thickness. So, if you look at this d q is basically proportional to the flame thickness and it is a constant that means, d q will be higher than the flame thickness. right? So, of course, uh, quenching diameter you know table we have seen I, I am not going to uh, talk about that, but let us see that how it is varying. Right. And uh, keep in mind that delta L is a proportional to the what you call burning velocity, because it can be related 4 by 3 alpha by S L. That means, the d q will be also function of or quenching diameter is a function of what equivalence ratio, it can be function of inlet temperature, it can be dependent on the pressure, it can be dependent on the type of fuel oxidizer system. right? So, let us look at how it is varying. This I have shown you flame thickness and these are methane air premixed flame system, flame thickness versus equivalence ratio. And this plot is basically quenching distance in mm. Right, and this is flame thickness on the mm. If you look at it, is around uh, you know uh, one or one point. This is a very minimum values, and similarly here also is having, but it is a little shifted to that. That means you know around one, it is having lower values, and this is having what you call higher values than that of the quenching distance. That means quenching distance is having higher value than that of the flame thickness. Right, and nature is almost similar but only thing in the this side it is little closer to that, because you are having multiplying and there might be some kinetics involved in that. So, what I am saying by using a very simple analysis right, which is quite simple what we have done, we can show the trend and trend is quite good. I mean it can give you the overall feature and it can replicate these are all experimental data you know it is replicating the trend. Okay and you can use also for as a design tool for that. So, limit mixtures if you look at uh, we will be talking about another concept known as flammability limit, limit mixtures. That means, there is a flame can propagate only when within the range of fuel and oxidizer ratio right. And it cannot propagate beyond certain limit right, both in the lean and reach limit. And but question is how to determine the flammability limit and this is very important from the safety point of view as well. And also you should not go on you know claiming or trying it out to burn some mixture which you it cannot be right. And this again will be related to what this flammability limit is related to what that we will see. So, there is a several ways of doing it but the most important uh, or which is being used is a vertical glass tube, particularly for atmospheric pressure condition, uh, which is length is 1.2 meter length and 50 uh, mm ID inner diameters. And why not a smaller diameter, why not a big diameter, why 50 alone right. So, if you look at typical experimental setup, we will be looking like this is a tube and it will be filled with the fuel air mixtures or fuel oxidizer mixture, air is of course, one of the oxidizer. And then you ignite in the bottom and let this flame propagate and see that how far it is moving right. Generally, it should move half of the length that is 1.2 meter as per the standard of American you know standard like American petroleum standard kind of thing they use, it should move half of the thing right. Suppose, you know then only you can say it is flammable, otherwise if it is moving initiated, but is not moving half of the portion then we call it as a inflammable or like not flammable right. So, that is a limit, it can have both uh, what you call lean limit, if you look at here the burning velocity I have shown with the fuel air mixture there will be limit beyond which flame cannot move. That means, flame would not be having a what you call any tangible burning velocity right, because it would not really move. Now, question arises like 
you know like it is having a why it is happening both the lean and the reach, why it is flame is getting quenched, basically flame is getting quenched is not it, why? Because I have already told you and when I am saying the word flame is getting quenched that means, heat loss is there and then it is just getting doused and not propagating. That is the one aspect and other aspect what you call you can see from this that uh, flammability limits you know changes from a certain range in which it will working as you are increasing the temperature right because burning velocity dependent on temperature and sl also is increased so you will find the limit mixtures are also enhancing you know that means it is become broader when you increase the temperature and keep in mind that i had asked you the question why 50 mm because if i use a smaller diameter then the you know then what will happen it will be affected by the heat loss then whatever mixture you will get the limit mixture you know not be right but if i use a bigger one you can say i can go for 50 then it will be little hazard just to handle so therefore 50 people have found out this thing there is another way of that when the flame is propagating from top to the bottom of the tube in a vertical this is a vertical tube so what is happening the flame is affected by the hot gases this hot gases will be here it will be trying to push the flame. As a result, you will get a different mixture. If I ignite over here, that means flame will be propagating downwards, right. What will happen? My limit data will not be or the flame burning velocities or the flame propagation will not be affected by the hot gases or the buoyancy natural convection, right. So, therefore, the people always prefer the downward propagation of the flame for making the flammability limit. In other words, the flammability limits obtained by the uh, upward propagation and downward propagation will be different, right. That you can keep in mind and that is due to, as I told you flammability limit is determined upward propagation flame from the ignition source. Mixture is said to be flammable only when travels above the half of the tube larger diameter prefer as it provide consistent result and free from the quenching this is very important. Like and as I told you direction of flame propagation affects the flammability limit. Flammability limit varies linearly with temperature. So, it is as I told it is dependent temperature it is also dependent on the pressure limits. If you look at pressure I have sun this equivalent reason these are flammable li mixtures here inside here. But here outside it is non flammable right. So, you can see that lean side it is having a kind of things whereas, the leach if I look at this pressure you know right here it is a slope is little shallow it is a little steeper here. So, of course, you know. So, pressure has a significant even flammable limit lean side is not affected significantly by the pressure right. Whereas, the reach limit becomes wider because it is you know like if I go on doing that you know I will be not changing. Suppose, I will go to another pressure whereas, here if I go over here there is a lot of more change this change is higher. So, that means, you know reach limit is becomes much wider right than the lean side. And let us look at the some data which I have taken methane air stoichiometric is 9.5 and lower flammability limit that is this side lean side or you can say you know lean flammability limit, but generally lower flammability people talk about it 5 percent upper flammability is 15 percent. What you can see is that you know is a similar trend you can see for ethane air that is 5.6 and 2.8 12.4 percent and propane air you can look at 5.6 stoichiometry and LFL 2.1 9.1. If you look at these data can you observe something from this data for all hydrocarbon what I have shown. Can you look at data and tell me what do you observe some trend can you get out of this. If you observe that the lower flammability limit is almost the half of the stoichiometric you know fuel is not half roughly it will 9.5 it is you know 4.75 kind of thing. So, it is actually approximately 5, 5.6, 2.8 similarly, whereas the reach limit is not really related. Of course, when you go for CO where is having a very wide flammability limit, but if you go for hydrogen air 
the flammability limit is quite wide you know as compared to hydrocarbon 4 percent of fuel and 74.2 percent of fuel under atmospheric condition right. This is whatever data I have given under atmosphere. So, therefore, whenever you are handling hydrogen one has to worry about it because it is having a wider range of flammability from the safety point of view. So, there is another concept which I will be uh, trying to look at today that is the ignition. You know what do you mean by ignition? Ignition is the rate of heat liberation near the ignition zone right must be greater than the heat lost by the conduction. That means, if I am giving some amount of ignition energy right and whatever you know heat being uh, it is going away at loss then naturally I my temp mixture cannot really reaches self ignition temperature to have a combustion right. So, therefore, one cannot have ignition at all may be fuel air mixture they are within the flammability limit, but I cannot have. That means, I what will the minimum ignition energy one can think of? One can think of the energy generated in the flame you know like that means, the ignition energy must be you know equal to the whatever the heat loss or greater than you know heat loss bank. So, now what we will do we will have to look at energy generated in the flame in is, is equal to what sensible enthalpy into mass of it and for that what we will do we will use the same idea what we use for discussing about quenching diameter. We look at in between this diameter the flame is there and which is traveling and having a thickness of delta L and it is the d q. Of course, I need to have a ignition energy beyond the quenching distance right. If I will give more than that then you know my flame will be can propagate I can initiate ignition right. So, let us look at we will be doing again some heat valence how much heat being generated how much heat being going away. So, that I can have a sustained flame for the ignition to occur. So, if you look at energy generated in the flame will be basically sensible enthalpy this C p T f minus T u because I am assuming this is the T f and the mixture which is coming basically T u you know like if uh, flame is traveling here the mixture will be here which is under the T u right. So, T f minus T u C p pi by 4 d q square this is the you know into the delta L as I told this will be like a cylinder I am considering. So, pi by 4 d q and into L this is nothing but your delta L right and this is your d q. So, that volume you know uh, how much it is uh, into the density rho is there rho into uh, volume it will give a mass and this amount of energy is nothing but your minimum ignition this will has to be given. So, that it can attain the flame temperature once it attain flame temperature it will propagate the nothing more right. So, that is the minimum ignition energy. So, substituting the quenching diameter you know I can talk about this uh, you know substituting this value in the quenching diameter I can get 2 pi c rho u c p t f minus t u delta l q right because this d q I can use the whatever I have used for this d q is nothing but root over 8 c d and delta l right d q is equal to root over 8 c delta l that I have we have already we will put that values and uh, we know that delta l is nothing but 4 by 3 alpha s l. So, you will get m i when you substitute these values alpha by s l q you know t f minus t u and k g. So, if you look at dependent on pressure if I look at this expression I will find that alpha is nothing but k g by rho u c p and k g and c p you can say it is not changing with respect to pressure, but however rho you will be saying. So, m i will be proportional to rho u square s l q and pressure 3 n by 2 minus 1 right. So, because we have seen that s l is uh, you know like uh, n n is the order of reaction reaction. So, if you find out that minimum ignition energy is dependent on the pressure. So, you can look at some of the things here the 
minimum ignition energy, methane air, these are all first two chemistry mixtures, you can see some number, it is in order of millijoules, right, and these are from the calculation one can get. So, let us now little bit dwell on how it is dependent on the pressure. So, uh, we have already seen that it is uh, if order of reaction is 2, what is happening here? You know, it will be something 3 minus 1, it will be 2 kind of thing, right. So, if you look at the if order of reaction is 2, uh, minimum is proportional to minus P2, it is a very strong, you know, dependent on the pressure. So, if you look at if I plot this minimum ignition energy and a plot here with respect to pressure, you will find that if around 100 atmosphere pressure you know kind of thing some amount of energy is having, but if the pressure decreases right, what happens that amount of ignition energy is very very high, but if of course, if it is because it is going asymptotically you know or going vertical the slope is very high right. And of course, here if it is the higher pressure, if I go from 100 to the 200, there is not much difference. You know, if you look at this difference is very, very small, right, kind of thing. So, what is a can you use the same ignition energy for flow conditions, you know, and that is a one question. But before that, I want to ask you, you know, we will be facing a lot of problem in the gas turbine engine, particularly at the higher altitude where pressure is low. So, can you use this uh, same ignition certainly no, for the flow condition we need to use 50 to 100 times that of ignition energy in quiescent atmosphere. Because what happened like you know uh, there is a flow condition heat losses will be there by convection which you have not considered and quiescent atmosphere you do not consider right. So, generally for a typical gas turbine combustor ignition energy 1 to 2 joule is prescribed for such successful initiation combustion even under the adverse situation. So, if you look at we will be uh, looking at some of the things when we discuss about gas turbine combustors kind of thing. Okay, fine.